Thanks to astronomical excise duties, Malaysia has the third highest beer prices in the world, which has given rise to a thriving contraband market. When combined with floods at its Sri Lankan associate business and poor sentiment in Malaysia, a challenging outlook is in store for Carlsberg Brewery Malaysia Berhad. Managing Director Lars Lehman breaks it down. Lars, good of you to join us. Um, we saw your Q1 results, good set of numbers, uh, strong performance from Malaysia and Singapore. But the, but the net result was actually dragged by uh, Lion in Sri Lanka, the after effects of the flood. Yeah. Was that the main reason or are there, were there other things as well? That was the main reason. So we, we got a good top line performance, around 11% up on our revenue and on the bottom line net profit and net of um, the, uh, the, the negative impact of Sri Lanka ended up at 7%. Without that one, we'd have grown a net profit by 14%. There was also an, an impairment yeah. on Miller, Miller Breweries, which also right. was a little bit unexpected by yeah. the uh, analyst community. Yeah, that's a pretty sizable uh, impairment of 12.5 million uh, ringgit. And that's an uh, acquisition of a company, a competitor, in 2014. And those brands have uh, not been uh, as strong as we expected. And then we have written them down, or rather the company Lion have written them down. So what does that mean? Because uh, impairments are by their nature quite uh, isolated, uh, yeah. a one-off incident. Yeah? yeah. So when do you expect Lion to really come back and make a significant contribution to the bottom line? I would say that Lion have never made a significant contribution to Carlsberg Malaysia Group. It's been around 10 million on, on, on an average to, to the bottom line. So, so it's not a huge part of our yearly result. The yearly result that would be between 200 and 250 million. So, but, but when this year where we uh, well, we lose 5.9 million in the in, in first quarter due to the impairment of Lion. It, of course, it's, it's a relative big hit. Yeah, on, uh, of course, profit after tax issue, yes. about 60 odd million. Yeah, so it's quite exactly, expensive. Yeah. Um, when we look at your top line demand yeah. from Malaysia and Singapore, quite strong, but it was also a seasonal bump. Yeah. Every year, you know, uh, Chinese New Year is one of the big um, upsides for the yeah. retail market. Uh, what about the outlook for Q2, 3, and 4? because the prognosis seems to be quite yeah. a weak or, or flattish uh, demand outlook. Yeah, we, we expect the market to be flat in volume and, and the consumer sentiment is also relatively weak both in, in Singapore and Malaysia. Despite that, we believe we are we're doing a, a good job in the market and we're also able to, uh, to uh, premiumize our portfolio. So break it down for us because mm. the sentiment seems to be quite weak. Mm. Certainly the Nielsen yeah. uh, index indexes uh, confirm that. Yeah. But uh, your top line seems to be all right in terms of yeah. the demand. So at outlook level, what, what, what is really driving demand for uh, your beers? Yeah. We, we still be, uh, expect to have a, a growth in our top line of 5 to 10% uh, for, for the rest of the year. So what's growing it is uh, our new loans last year, our innovation, Carlsberg Smooth Draft here, which also was um, sold very well during Chinese New Year in, in the cane version. So that helps us a lot. So it's actually innovation. Then we got brands like Somersby and brands like Kronborg Blanc that's also growing very, very fast in our portfolio. So that helps. So it's basically innovations driving it. So you seem yeah. to be moving up the uh, affluency level because yeah. these, these guys are a bit more expensive than your typical Carlsberg uh, kind of brands. This is more around the same price level as the normal Carlsberg Green Dim. So that's what we call the mainstream segment. You're right, Somersby and, and Blanc are, are, are priced higher. So does that mean by going for the, you know, the upper middle classes, the, your, your demand outlook will be uh, you know, buffered? Yeah, we, 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 we don't believe it's just for upper uh, middle class. We believe it's, it's affordable premium that, that anyone in, uh, in Malaysia or Singapore that's, uh, that can afford it. Yeah. And then from the pricing perspective, because we've had just the, uh, the government just released the um, Anti-Profiteering Act, so obviously in the wake of the GST introduction, April 2015, I think. Yeah. Um, what, what's your outlook for price increases for 2017? Yeah. We don't have any, uh, planned any major price increases. We just announced very recently a small price increase on, on Connors, and, uh, and that's all what we planned for, for this year. What about on the yeah. regulatory side, uh, things like the excise duties? We've yeah. had a couple of rounds of increases, mm. uh, not just with the, you know, not just with the alcohol boys, yeah. with the tobacco boys as well. Um, it appears that in, uh, inland revenue are getting quite mm. aggressive with their collection procedures. Yeah. Um, certainly, this week we saw some property companies mm. being hit, mm -hmm. some gaming companies being hit. Yeah. How, how are you 
liaising with the government to perhaps get some visibility into some of those issues. Yeah, we, we, are, we are in contact with the government and authorities on, on all that sort of a issues. And um, on the excise duty, we had a big hike in the excise duty 1st of March last year, between 10 and 90 percent, depending on the alcohol level. So I think we had a, a huge increase last year. And uh, I hope and expect that we don't will have that again. If we get that, then we will have an even bigger issue with the contraband beer getting into this country. Same issues as, uh, as tobacco have faced. Yeah, I mean, Tobacco Boys, obviously, yeah. they've shuttered operations. Mm. Japan Tobacco uh, saying goodbye, mm. British American Tobacco last year saying mm. goodbye. Uh, how big of a problem mm. is contraband in Malaysia? It's big. According to Deloitte, that made their uh, um, analysis of that a few years back, it's between 25 and 30 percent of the total Malaysian beer market is contraband beer. Vast majority in, in East Malaysia, though. But What's still 10 to 15 percent in the peninsula. What's the biggest impediment to you know, stamping it out? It's, um, the root cause is uh, a very high price level of, of beer in, in Malaysia. It's the third highest excise duty level on beer in the world. And After uh, Norway and... Norway, it's Norway and Singapore, that's mm -hmm. one and two. Which are your so, two markets. So, so when you have a, a big gap between the pricing of legal beer, duty paid beer, and contraband, then it's simply opening up for, for a lot of the influx of contraband, simply make it attractive. What about enforcement though? That's the other part of it. If you have that big big gap, then you need to have much stronger enforcement. Like if, if, if for example, this is the case in both Norway and, and Singapore. So at what point does it become yeah. untenable for manufacturers like yourselves to say, hey, you know, Malaysia might not make as much sense as it did 10, 20 years ago to do business. You, just, you saw the mm -hmm. tobacco boys um, saying, well, enough is enough. Mm. Heck, taxes are too high, yeah. too unpredictable, too many illicit cigarettes in the market. Yeah. Bye bye. No, we're not, we're not at that level yet. I believe that the contraband in tobacco is uh, around so close to 60% now. So that's much more than we are facing, and it's across all of Malaysia. I think that in Western Malaysia, we still have a, 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 a decent level of, uh, uh, of, um, of contraband, which is around, we estimate around 10 to 15%. So we're not in the same. Um, category as, as tobacco yet we still have a, a breed that's running uh, efficient and we're using the capacity etc so we don't have uh, the issues that are uh, tobacco facing yet but if we do see continued increases in excise duties then that might uh, change very rapidly